for a lit kid. Chevy, please let me roll this weed up. This the main event to watch the people. All right, so we're talking about Cincinnati today, the Bengals. And I have mixed feelings about this team. There's things that I that I like. Like, I mean, when you look at their draft picks and you look at the people that they're bringing in, you think about the draft pick last year and Mixon and John Ross, those two guys, too, to think about that for a second. But, like, this team is doing a great job of, like, when, when you think about it, it's like, okay, this team's really not that far off, okay? Two, three years ago, this team was making the playoffs every year. The Andy Dalton was getting it done. Andy Dalton – and the Bengals really started off bad last year. Usually they start off a little bit more like 500-ish, and then they get things kind of getting the, going together. You know, A.J. Green kind of got exposed as being soft last year um, when, you know, after the, you know, he doesn't like to be fucked with. Like, it, that's what happened when Jalen Ramsey fucked with him. He realized that, that A.J. Green doesn't want to be fucked with. Like, he doesn't like to be fucked with, and I think teams will continue to fuck with him. Um I mean, he pit, he. I had never seen AJ Green get that pissed off in my life. You know, I had never seen nothing like that. What Jay, what Jalen Ramsey did to his ass last year, he had that motherfucker turning. Um, and so, as good as good as like it's like as good as AJ Green has been over the last couple of years, and then like as as serviceable as Andy Dalton's been, like it's just like, are they? Is that enough to be like, yeah, this team with the added pieces that they have? with the defense, the old defense that they continue to bring back, is this team trending in the direction, in the right direction, or are they trending down? You know, you would say they've got a quarterback, they've got a wide receiver, they just drafted a running back. You know, they're, they're, they're doing things to their defense and to their offense to improve. But at the same time, you know, every time it's like they take a couple steps forward, but they take another step back. I mean, you talk about the free agents this year, Kevin Minter. He's gone. He's a Jet now. He was one of their better better linebackers. You know Burfitt's going to get a four-game suspension every year. He's got a four-game suspension to start the year this year. Now you're going with no Kevin Minter. Uh, he's at the Jets. Andre Smith, one of their offensive linemen, went to Arizona. Eric Winston was one of their offensive linemen. He's still a free agent. Kevin uh, Huber, their, their punter, has re-signed. Tyler Eifert, a guy they probably should have let go. They resign. It, it, it's just like the guys that they should not let go. They don't resign. The guys that they should let go, they resign them. It's like Tyler Eifert has has done nothing of what he's been asked to do or what you expected out of him, and he just is injured all the time. I mean, he's as good as Dennis Pitta, honestly. But but this motherfucker gets the. I mean, Dennis Pitta did get resigned every year. This kid gets resigned though every year. Tyler Eifert, his brother, plays for Purdue. Little little factoid: Purdue basketball. Um, and then Pat Sims is still a free agent. Jeremy Hill's gone. He's gonna be. Uh, I can't even remember who the fuck went to the Patriots last year. Oh, Mike Gis- Gillisley. He's gonna be your Mike Gillisley this year. He'll probably play the first two games of the year, get six touchdowns, and then he'll fumble once, and you'll never fucking hear about him again. That's Jeremy Hill to the Patriots. Either gonna be a huge. Huge game plan, huge fantasy player next year. He's going to be a huge bust. Uh, Russell Bodine, a guy that – so he decided not to sign a deal with the Bengals, but then he went and signed a shorter deal with the with the Bills. So he's for the he plays for the Bills now. Russell Bodine, one of their better offensive linemen. And then A.J. McCarron's gone. He's gone to Buffalo too. Both of them have gone out to Buffalo together. Hmm. So um, – Talking about that was most of their losses. Talking about their ads, Cordy Glenn. They they got in a trade um, from the being from the from the Bills. So basically, they gave the Bills uh, Bodine and they got Cordy Glenn in return. Cordy Glenn, pretty good guard or tackle, whatever the fuck he plays. I can't remember. Um, pretty good, pretty good player. It should you know that's one of those guys. Okay, that was good. You did good on that pick, Preston Brown. That was a good pick. I like the Preston Brown pick. I think he played at Buffalo last year too. So it's funny, a couple guys going to Buffalo, a couple guys going to the Bengals. It's kind of like a little bit of a trade there, but I don't think a trade ever happened. I think maybe the Cordy Glenn trade happened, but I think that was for draft picks or something. Um, So talking about team team needs for um, the Bengals, when I week fourteen or whenever I made this, 
maybe a power back for Mixon um, is something that I mentioned in here. And they didn't really they didn't really do that. They didn't really add a power back for him. Not that that's really a big issue because Mixon can be that power back. There was just times last year where he'd hit the hole and he'd hit it a little hard and he'd come out holding the shoulder or something. And, you know, he really doesn't look that big on the NFL field. He looked a lot bigger at Oklahoma, but he does not look that big on an NFL field. So that's kind of – he's kind of a slotty type guy, and they have a lot of slot type players on that team uh, at the at the running back position. Now, my second team need was address tight end position. Uh, is Croft enough? Is Eifert – Eifert is a free agent injury prone. Couldn't read it there for a second. Um, so basically what I was saying, I don't think the Croft kid is enough. You know, I think you should have drafted somebody if your bet was to keep keep Croft. But I don't think Eifert's worth enough to go and keep him during free agency with the fact that he's injury prone. So I didn't I thought that they probably should just draft a tight end. I liked a lot of the tight ends. I liked six to seven tight ends that were coming out of the draft. They very well could have got one. They did, and they went ahead and re-signed Eifert. I guess they had enough cap space to go ahead and do that. They saw other positions that needed to be drafted. Um, a right tackle, Cordy Glenn. Uh, that was something that I said they needed. They got Cordy Glenn. Uh, draft offensive line was something that I said. James Daniel was the guy I thought that they should go after, but they went after Billy Price. I could care less who they go after. Billy Price is a good one. And I said draft a linebacker or resign or resign mentor. And they didn't fucking re-sign Minter, but they did get Preston Brown. So Preston Brown will be holding that middle linebacker position down until Burfitt gets back or uh, whatever. I We'll see what happens with that. But I think Pres- Preston Brown's been a really good player over the last couple of years. Uh, I like him a lot. Um, he's been a good tackler. I think he's going to be good for this Bengals team. Now, the thing that I don't like about the Bengals is their secondary. They keep on bringing back the same secondary. These guys that they've drafted over, like they draft them, like each one of them over a couple of years. I think Drake Kirkpatrick, and uh, they have, I think they still have Ioka, I think is his name. And then they have, uh, they have William Jackson, I think, who they drafted at Houston last year. Just a couple guys that just haven't panned out the way that they thought they would, and they continue to stick with them. And, and I do like a couple – like, let's talk about their draft class now. Now, you're basically getting John Ross. John Ross didn't play – I don't remember John Ross doing jack shit last year. So, John Ross is basically a rookie this year. I mean, it's not like it's some Ben Simmons shit where he's going to be rewarded rookie of the year if he goes off or something. But John Ross is a guy I think we should watch, and Joe Mixon is another guy we should watch for this team. Those, if those guys can fucking play good, they could really help the Bengals out, and the Bengals may be better than we think. Let's talk about their draft class for a minute. Billy Price, he's going to be their starting center. Jesse Bates, one of my favorite safeties in all the draft, um, really like Jesse Bates. I really hope Jesse Bates can come in here this offseason and he can steal a fucking starting job from one of these old fucking safeties. I like Jesse Bates a lot. I think he's going to be one of the starters on this team in a couple years, if not this year. Sam Hubbard, strengthen up that defensive line. They need more defensive line play. Sam Hubbard's a good pick. He's been good. Malik Jefferson, this is another linebacker that you can mold because I think it's time to get rid of Burfick. Burfick causes more pain than he fucking puts out. That's just how it is. Burfick causes more pain to your team than he puts out. Like he puts out a good amount of pain, but it's still not enough the amount of pain that he hurts you. So, and I ain't talking about when he hits you. I'm talking about the negative effect he has from the field. He probably has a negative effect in the locker room and he constantly is getting suspensions or getting fines for illegal hits or for using PEDs. So Malik, so Malik Jefferson, I think, could potentially replace him, be a really good player. I really like Malik Jefferson. He was, to me, a top five linebacker. These, they, they did a, a great job of getting some top five guys at each position. Now, they didn't get the top guy, but these are some top picks from each positional. Mark Walton. Mark Walton was a top 20 running back, probably top 15. But Mark Walton is going to be a good pick. I just don't know where Mark Walton fits in with this offense this year. Uh, Devontae Harris, a guy from Illinois State, cornerback. Hopefully he can get in that secondary and help them out. Andrew Brown, a defensive end out of uh, Virginia. Darius Phillips, 
He is a uh, cornerback out of Western Michigan. He can play. Uh, he can kick return, punt return. He's good at stuff like that. They have John Ross, so I don't know how how much he'll be used, but he's a good player. Logan Woodside's a quarterback from Toledo that they went ahead and got. I didn't like Logan Woodside too much. He was on the lower half. He was out the top ten of my uh, quarterbacks. Rod Taylor, and a lineman, and then Auden Tate. I think they a great job with Auden Tate. Auden Tate's a guy that got pretty late. Um, was their, one of their last picks. But the thing is about Auden Tate, he's a big guy. Uh, he was higher on some people's draft boards. He was lower on mine, but he was a guy that still got dra- was still draftable. So I think it was a good a good pick. He was he's he's been Florida State's best receiver over the last year. So this team is in a is in a state of limbo right now. They they're coming off being great the last couple years. They were really bad last year, and they've kind of they've kind of like they're in the middle of like a rebuild. It's like they've gotten rid of a lot of those or some of those players of the past and they've added a lot of new guys, but at the same time, they still have a lot of those old guys with it. I think their weakness is their offensive line until they establish that. I think one of their strengths is honestly their defensive experience in the, it, their, I think their defense is very experienced. And I think this is a team that's been here. Like, even though like they might come across as like a young inexperienced team. I think they have enough veterans on their team that they can win those tough, you know, a hard fought battle weeks. And I mean, when we're talking about that, I mean, this, sometimes I have to sit back and I have to remind myself, this is not that bad of a team. Like this is a team that was in like the playoffs multiple years. Now they can't win a playoff game. That's been the joke. But the fact is, is they've been in the playoffs multiple years as of lately. And for them just to fall off like they have, and to think that they got as high as a draft pick as they did, that they lost, I mean, they lost some this offseason, but, like, most of their losses, they, they like, did a good job of, of replacing that loss with somebody else, either in the draft or in free agency. So the Bengals, you know, they could be 9-7 and seven or they could be 5-11. and 11. I'm projecting more of a 5-11 and 11 than a 8-8, eight and 9-7, eight, 7-9. And seven, seven and I'm projecting more of a 5-11 and 11 type season. And, you know, when you have a 5-11 and 11 season, I think that's when finally maybe Andy Dalton will be on the hot seat. You know, I've been asking Andy to be on the hot seat with that fiery hair for like about four years now. He deserves to be on the hot seat. And every time he gets on the hot seat, he has about four or five good weeks. And then Andy Dalton goes and does an Andy Dalton thing again. He fucking goes and breaks his thumb on a tackle week 16, week 17, or whatever the fuck it is. He thrust A.J. McCarron onto the scene, and that that was over. That was two years ago. So we'll see what shenanigans Andy Dalton pulls out. But if anything, I mean, Andy Dalton is already rich. I mean, this motherfucker, I don't I mean, I remember when he played at TCU. I was like, this motherfucker can't be an NFL quarterback. And look at him. I mean, he's made it a lot longer than some of the other guys that looked way better prospects than him. Up, bottle of some jam, let's just hit a couple freaks up I'ma take one home and have her singing like the Glee Club Never on no cheap stuff, I mean we got expensive tapes Green lights, never press the brakes You can look at us, bro, 